Welcome to this lecture in our linear algebra course. Today we're going to look at an example of a vector subspace. And so let's start immediately with the statement we want to prove. Okay, so proposition 5. And it has to do with vector spaces of uh, functions. So um, the let, let let C be the vector set, that's right, the vector space of all continuous real valued functions. Okay, and let Pn be the set of all polynomials or better polynomial functions of order n or less okay so remember the order of a polynomial function is the highest uh, degree of the variable uh, you're using. Okay, then P of n is a subspace of C. Okay, so essentially we have to prove these uh, three conditions. Okay, and we're going to assume uh, that C is a vector space. Okay, we don't have to prove it, it's already given. Okay, so let's start uh, proof. Okay, and the, and the trick here is going to be using the summation notation to write the polynomial function. What do I mean by that? Okay, so let's start, for example, by proving uh, the first condition, right? Closure under uh, uh, addition. Okay, so uh, let y, or better, uh, let p1 and p2 belong to p of n. Okay, that means they are polynomials of order n or less. Then I can write this as well p1 is equal to this summation right here, right? Let's say it has order m. Okay, then it's going to be the summation from 0 to m of ai xi x to the power of i, whereas p2, I can write it as, let's assume it is of order uh, l, right, then it's going to be bi x to the power of i, okay? So if I take this sum of the two, right, p1 plus p2, that is going to be summation from i to zero, oh, sorry, from uh, zero to m of ai xi plus this sum right here. Okay, right now it doesn't look like a polynomial, but it will soon. Okay, so without loss of generality, right, assume that m is greater than or equal to l. Okay, it could be the other way, it doesn't really matter. It's going to be either m greater than or equal to l or l greater than or equal to m. The logic is the same. Okay, then what can we do? Well, uh, we can write this as one entire sum from 0 to m, right, of ai xi plus b, and I'm going to put an asterisk here. Why? Because these coefficients are going to be different, right? How will I define these coefficients? Well, where bi is equal to, sorry, bi asterisk is equal to bi for uh, i between 0 and l, and 0 for i greater than l, okay? Uh, that is because 
the polynomial p2 is only of order l. Okay, so all the coefficients of x to the power greater than l have to be zero. Okay, and if I rewrite this in a different way, this is equal to be this is going to be equal to a sum from i equals to zero to m of a i plus b i asterisk, which I can just define to be c i times x to the i. That is clearly a polynomial. So p one plus p two does indeed uh, belong to p of n. Okay, so we have proven the first condition. Let's now prove the second one, closure under scalar multiplication. And it's going to be in a very similar fashion to, um, to the first condition. So two, um, let p belong to pn, right? Then what this means is we can write uh, p as this sum right here and therefore alpha times p uh, or actually if we wanted to be really precise we'd have to put the the x right here okay um, because we're applying the function over you know uh, x so alpha p of x, alpha times p of x, is equal to, again, let's, let's be a bit formal here. So alpha p x, right, what is this equal to? Uh, well, it's, it's going to be alpha times the sum from 0 to m of a i times x to the i. This is a constant, so you can drag it into the sum, and we get this result right here. And again, if I define this to be c i, then clearly this is in the form of a polynomial, so alpha p belongs to p of n. Finally, the last thing is we have to prove that the zero vector of the vector space belongs to uh, uh, of to Pn. In this case, the zero vector of the vector space is just the zero function, right? That's a polynomial where all the coefficients are equal to zero. Okay, does it belong to P of n? So, does zero belong to p of n? Of course it does, right? Yes, because zero is a polynomial of order zero, right? And zero is uh, less than n, uh, provided n is, uh, you know, a natural number. Uh, so yes, so yes, the zero function does belong to p of n, and therefore we can say, because these three conditions are met, that p of n is indeed a subspace of c. Okay, and that finishes our proof right there.